This time, I'm summarizing naked statistics, stripping the dredge from the data by Charles Whelan. He's an American economist. He's previously written Naked Economics. And this book, Naked Statistics, is an excellent introduction to statistics, doesn't assume any background knowledge. So this is a great book to read if you want to learn about statistics from the beginning or you want to revise statistics. It's about 250 pages long and it was published in 2013. And the focus of the book is on the intuition, the, the logic behind statistics rather than the calculations. In the year 1930, the American president, Herbert Hoover, declared the Great Depression was over. He was wrong. It would continue for many more years. He declared that unemployment stood at 2.5 million. In fact, it was probably double that and rising rapidly. You see, when Hoover said that, there were no official statistics for the economy. There were no official statistics for GDP, no official statistics in America for inflation. And so when Hoover was making decisions about how to repair the economy and raise people out of poverty, he was flying blind. Now, fortunately, we don't have that problem. If anything, we have the opposite problem. That we have such a, a huge amount of numbers, such a super abundance of statistics, that it's difficult for us to process them. And as the book emphasizes, statistics can be used and they can be misused. There are going to be people out there, people and organizations and companies and politicians who misuse statistics in order to confuse you and in order to use you. And so what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to figure out what the numbers can do and what they can't, how statistics can be used and how they can be misused. Now, throughout the book, he's giving examples of American politics and American sports and American education. What I've done is I've made the examples a bit more generic. Let's imagine we have a town. And in our town, there's an election coming up. And the mayor of the town, he says, look, I'm a great mayor. 80% of the school pupils have better performance. 80% have better performance now that I've been the mayor. This proves that I'm a great mayor. Vote for me again. But then there's someone else, a contestant. And this other person also wants to be mayor. And this person says, wait a second, that's wrong. 60% of our schools have lower performance. Three out of five of our schools have worse performance. Only two out of five have better performance. Our schools are getting worse. The mayor has failed our children. Vote for me instead. And so both of these people are using statistics in order to try to get your vote. Well, which one's right? Well, it's possible that both of them are right. So it's possible that these different schools have different numbers of students. So it could be that, well, yes, only two out of five schools are doing better, but they could be the two schools that most of the people go to. And so the numbers tell you some things, those two numbers could be true, but the numbers don't tell you everything. And so what you need to do is you need to look at the numbers in the wider context. This book is focusing on four things that statistics can do. The first thing that you can do with statistics is to describe, to describe the world. So you have many instances of a phenomenon and you can reduce it down, simplify it to some number, such as central tendency, finding typical numbers. So let's imagine I have a group of people, a group of 10 people in this room, and they have kind of a normal UK income. And I want to find out, well, there's 10 numbers for their income. Let's reduce it down to one number just to make it simpler. And what is a typical income? Well, I could take the mean. So I could add up everyone's score, divide by the number of people. That gives me the mean. There you go. But let's imagine an 11th person comes in and this 11th person is a billionaire. And so what happens here is now that this billionaire has come in, the mean is it shoots up to, in this case, 91 million, because this outlier, this extreme number, distorts, throws off the mean. So the mean here is 91 million. And so you'd wrongly say that the typical income is 91 million. Now, here's the thing. The mean isn't wrong. The mean is actually 91 million. No 
mathematical errors have been committed. So the point that Whelan is making is that when statistics is misused, when there are mistakes with statistics, it's not because someone did the math wrong. It's not because there were mistakes with the calculations. It's because it's using the inappropriate sample or the inappropriate statistical test. Okay, so what about instead we use the median? So the median isn't affected by these outliers. The median is where you get a group of numbers, you rank them highest or smallest, and you take the middle one. But there are times when that can also be misleading. So let's imagine there's a, um, a group of people who unfortunately have some dreadful disease. But the good news is this, there's this medication which can help them. So let's say that two out of three people who take this medication do not benefit. The medication doesn't work for two out of three people. It adds zero years uh, to their prognosis, doesn't benefit them. However, the other third of the people are cured completely and they live on many more decades. Wonderful. Well, if I was to take the median number, that would be zero. The median would tell me not to take the drug, that the drug doesn't help people, which is terribly inaccurate. Very bad advice because it has a one in three chance of curing you. In that case, it would be better to use the mean because the mean does account for the smaller number of people who get a large amount of the benefits. And so the individual statistics don't tell you enough. You need a large number of the statistics. And again, you need them in context. OK, so we've measured a sample of people with our um, with our descriptive summary statistics. However, statistics can also allow us to infer, to make estimates about the people we haven't measured. So let's go back to that town where they're having the election. Now, we're journalists and we want to find out in advance who's won the election. And so in order to win the election, the mayor needs to have more than 50% of the vote. And so what we do as journalists is we stand outside the voting booths and when people come out, we ask them, who did you vote for? That's an exit poll. And in this case, in our exit poll of 500 people, 53% of people said they voted for the mayor. So that's good. It looks like the mayor was won. But we've only measured 50 people. Sorry, we've only measured 500 people from the whole town. Different samples of 500 people are going to tell us different things. So a different sample could say 55% voted for the mayor. Another sample could say 45% voted for the mayor, in which case the mayor would have lost. Different samples tell us different things. But the good thing about statistics is there's a wonderful thing called central limit theorem, which is that, yes, different samples will tell us different things, in this case, different percentages. However, central limit theorem says that if you take the statistic from different samples and plot them as a distribution, they'll tend to be normally distributed around the actual real answer, the real population value. And so using that, we can create what's called a, a confidence interval, which in Poland they call a margin of error, which says, look, this sample says 53%. However, because samples tell different samples say different things, we can be confident that it would be between these two numbers. That the real answer, the real number of people who voted for the mayor will be between these two numbers. OK, good. In this case, that spread, that interval crosses over 50 percent, goes below 50. And so it's actually too close to call. We can't be confident that the mayor has won because that interval has crossed the 50 line. However, if we measure more people, the more people we measure, the closer the sample gets to the population, the narrower that interval will be. And here, because we've measured 2,000 people, we can be confident that the mayor has won because that interval doesn't cross over 50%. Good. A third thing statistics can do can help us to assess risk. Some people think of statistics as just a set of dull equations. I think of statistics as the best tool we have to deal with the uncertainty of the world. Let's imagine that you're a bank and you give people loans and you give business loans. So you give them money, they give it you back and some interest. And well, all of the money you use to run the business is coming from the interest. But some people aren't going to pay you back and you don't know who those people are going to be. But the good thing is, if you can find out how much money you'd make with each outcome, pay and default, and 
the probability of both of those outcomes, and then you can work out what's called the expected value. And then, now we have the expected value, we know whether it's a good idea to lend the money, and therefore the bank doesn't close down and you don't lose your job every time someone defaults on their loans. A fourth thing that statistics can do is allow us to find the relationships between variables. Here, the relationship between height in centimeters and weight, sorry, height in inches and weight in pounds. And so what we can see is every single doctor to person has a positive relationship. The people who score higher in height tend to score higher in weight. This is called a correlation. Correlation can tell us the relationship between variables. People who score higher in one score higher in the other. Another thing that, can stati that statistics can do is it can allow us to predict the level of one variable from another. So we can get these dots here and we can actually create a line of best fit that can allow us to predict someone's weight and given their height. This is called regression, predicting one variable from another variable. And in fact, another thing regression can do is to predict some outcome from many, many, many predictors. And we can summarize this into an equation here. Wonderful, we can predict one thing from another using this relationship. So what we've got here in this case, and you'll see in that equation, that number 4.5, that's the slope of the line. So what that means is for every one inch someone is taller, they will weigh 4.5 more pounds on average. Okay, that's the slope. Well, remember, different samples tell us different things, and we want to find if that slope is different from zero. Because remember, different samples tell us different things. We want to be confident that that slope is actually different from zero where there's no relationship. The good thing, going back to our central limit theorem again, we know that different samples say different things. Well, what we can do is we can calculate the degree to which different samples tell us different things. That's called standard error. I have a whole video if you want to find out more about standard error. And what we can see in this example is that we see in that blue area, there's a spread. You see that spread there in that blue area? Well, that means that 95% of the time in this case, when we take a different sample, that slope is going to be between about here and here in that blue area. And that slope doesn't include zero. So remember before, we knew we could be confident that the mayor won because that interval didn't cross 50. Here, we can be confident there is a relationship between two variables because the size of the slope, well, different samples tell us different slopes, but that interval of what the slope really is doesn't cross zero. And that means that we can be confident that there is really a relationship between them and the effect is called statistically significant. Okay, now those are the four things that statistics can do. And that is my summary on Naked Statistics by Charles Wheeler, an excellent book to read if you want to learn about or you want to revise statistics.